Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got information on new bikes, we've got environmentally sound products, plus some new shoes. And then we talk about our first ever bikes. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one. Right, this week then, we're celebrating first bikes because I reckon everyone out there can relate to this. Your first bike is a really special moment. And well, it's a great way as well, it's looking to see just how far tech has come during our short lives of cyclists. Yeah, that's true. In fact, can you remember your first bike, John? I can, yeah. Ah, and so can I, because last night I sent your mum a message. What? And she sent me about some photos. I know. Here's John, age nine, riding oh. around on his pride and joy. Oh. Red and white towns in there. Yeah. Can you remember how many gears that one had? I can, yeah. Do you know what, actually? I'm going to bring in the uh, the laptop here so we can both sort of, well, go to town on me, probably, yeah. and that bike. Uh, yeah, it had five five gears. So it also had a single uh, single ring at the front there, so a one by setup. So essentially, Pioneer. I was, a, I was, a, yeah, I was yeah. a trendsetter, a trailblazer, whatever you want to call it. Um, now it had 20 inch wheels. It would derail your uh, guard there as well on yep. the back. So Perfect when for I, laying it down the wrong way. Exactly, yeah. It had a pair of toe clips strapped onto some pretty big, look how size of those pedals. They're bigger than your feet were. Yeah, massive. I also had a uh, like a top tube and seat tube thing so I could carry the bike on the my bike shoulder packing? as a nine year old. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was also, there was, a, there was like a, a zip on it as well. I could carry stuff. Uh, integrated bar and stem, just like on the Cervelo S5, but a flat bar version. Again, I set the trend. It's quite clear to see where the inspiration came from, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When do you reckon this was, John? Uh, I reckon 1989, Ooh. so yeah, quite a while ago. God, 30 years ago. The helmet cover's a bit of a, a highlight for me. Yeah, a Medela helmet cover on top of that fruit bowl that I was wearing on, Imagine on my lid. Leads me on to the rest of your clothing choices there, John. They're, um, they're baggy forearms, aren't they? No, 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 that, uh, I was stacked, mate. It was a nine-year-old, oh, right. really stacked. Big old forearms, yeah, I used to hit hit the gym. Right. The gym, yeah. Was... So what happened to yours in the end, John? Ah, he stayed in my family, actually, for a little while. <laughs> for a little while. Now, my cousin Hobbit, that's not his real name, by the way, Hobbit. It's just a nickname. Uh, he had that bike. In the end, I converted it into a single speed, so I took off the rear mech, though, probably broke. That became um, fashion later, didn't it? Single yeah, speed again, biking. Again, yeah, so trendsetter. He borrowed it, took it on a scout camp or something, and he ended up jumping it into lakes and stuff like no. that with his mates. Yes, yeah, so it's probably in the bottom of a lake somewhere. Oh, Hobbit. So, yeah. Did yeah. he do the old trick where you tie the inner tube to the frame? Or a few inner tubes to the frame so they float back up? No, he didn't, no. He wouldn't sure. have had the intelligence to do that. Or, or, or <laughs> foresight to have done that. Instead, he's just lost it. Uh, but yeah, compared to a modern bike, you know, a modern kids' bike, yeah. they've come a long way, haven't they? Because they are unreal these days. Yeah. You get them with aluminium frames. I mean, yeah. that was a pipe dream as a, as a nine-year-old. come with purpose-built lightweight wheels for a start. Small brake Ergon Yeah, I was going to say, everything's ergonomically designed yeah. to fit them. Yeah, and then I progressed, actually, on from that bike on to my first proper road bike. Here I am, this is during the ESCA. Do you remember ESCA? Yeah, English yeah, School Cycling Association. Yeah, that was the National Hill Climb Champs, and they used to do it, obviously, in categories, whatever. So I was probably about 12. And they ran with the photo. school year, didn't they? As opposed to the British Cycling one, which was your age. Yeah, so there it is, you know, a yeah. road bike. Look at that bad boy. Now that, that starts to look more like you know. Does it? Yeah, the, yeah. Face, the facial expression. What, my tongue out when I'm concentrating? Yeah, well, the way your eyes are looking, yeah. down at the road ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, I thought they were closed. That's a cool bike that, John. Yeah, yeah, pooch. I'd love to get that again. In fact, I had to look around on eBay for one of those, couldn't find one, but yeah. A pair of Ron Hill Tracksters as well, because they yeah, probably couldn't afford, like, you know, a proper kit. Or oh, you won't go for a run afterwards? No, definitely no. not, no, no. Maybe oh. it's triathlon. <laughs> Right, well I messaged your wife anyway, and yeah, she sent me in some pictures of you, Chris. Uh, this is you on your first road bike, which you got back in 1997 at Christmas. I did, yeah. And it was a Bataglin road bike. Tell us a little bit about that. So it was a 48 centimetre frame, back when I was nine and a half years old. No, oh, it would have been 10 in 97. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was 10 years old, 10 and a half years old, and I couldn't believe it. It was beyond my wildest dreams that I was able to get such a bike for Christmas that year, and it was just phenomenal. I remember, I, I think I rode that bike all of 98, 99, 2000, and most of 2001, so it lasted well. Yeah. And it's in fact the only bike that I still have. So it, had, it was steel frame and chrome forks. Um, it started out life with the original Campag wheels that came on it, Campag Mirage and Avanti Mix. Oh, which I nice. don't think they I bet you thought you were a little like Giovanni Bataglin riding around the streets no, and no. The farm lanes of Cornwall no, thinking better you were. Better than that. Go on. Little Marco Pantani. <laughs> That's what I dreamt. Yeah. Just looking I, at the ears yeah. to see at the size of them. Well, I used but, to have really short hair as well. 
luckily there aren't any. You have today as well, actually. Maybe you knew this episode was coming. Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, that bike, I must have done hundreds and thousands of kilometers on that bike over the years. Did my very first race on it, which you can see in that first picture there with the little peak on the helmet, the yeah. football shirt, the baggy socks. Obviously, <laughs> I love it. Fashion wasn't a big thing back then for me. Um, I, don't, I don't know, mate. I grew with the bike, like so. It started out the bike was obviously way too big, but it's yeah. the smallest one they did. Yeah, forty-eight. That is small. Yeah, it was amazing. I absolutely loved it, and I love the fact that picture of you there at Christmas getting it. And I can just see a smug little grin on your face. Yeah, just like wouldn't have been. Yeah, able to like it. can't believe that. Town sidewalls. If you yeah. look closely there. Yeah. I, don't, I can't remember what the original tyres were. Well, my, one my first race on that bike as well. It's you. It's special. The best ever purple colour. I don't actually know what they officially called that colour, but it's purple. still, even to this day, the, the paintwork looks absolutely amazing. And in fact, I had my name painted on the top tube years later in like really nice italic white writing. That was really cool. What are you going to do with that bike then, as soon as you kept it? Just keep it forever. Um, it appeared at my wedding. It was uh, decorated loads of flowers, which yeah. my mum tastefully did. That's nice. Yeah, just you can't get rid of that now. No. Right, we want to see the viewers' bikes, don't we? Yeah, we do, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we've got a link in the uploader tool. So click A new there. link? Yeah, okay. there is, in fact, yeah, a new folder for you to drop your pride and joy in, and we'll go through them next week. Yeah. I, I love a trip down memory lane. It's good. It's really nostalgic, and just brings back a lot of happy memories, doesn't it? Yeah. I've just got to go and find that bike from the bottom of that river now. <laughs> Hobbit. <laughs> Right, hot tech now. Well, John, people often write in and ask us exactly what we get up to when we're not presenting videos like this one, don't they? They do, yeah. And the truth is, we sit on the UCI Frame Approved List website and we continually press refresh. Yeah, and that hard work has paid off once again because, well, we've spotted that Cannondale appear to be releasing two new frames, the CAD 13 and also a new Super 6 Evo. Both of them are available in rim and disc brake options, and rumour has it the launch is imminent. I do love an aluminium Cannondale. Well, I dug even deeper, John, and I found more than just numbers online. I found this picture on the Weight Weenies forum and look at it. It's quite different to anything you normally see from Canada, yeah, actually. That is, yeah, it's quite well, strikingly different, isn't it? It is indeed. They got rid of the horizontal top tube. Slightly. Yeah, and also they got those drop seat stays. Yeah, and there's also a bit of aero profiling by the looks of it on the tubes. Mm. More so than normal. Yeah, I mean, we can't confirm or deny if that is the actual bike, but well, we can only go on what we've seen. It's a great mock up if it isn't the real one. Yeah, and now I dug even deeper down oh. to the inner core of the earth, if you like, or well, Rigoberto's Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Rigoberto Aran's Instagram, rather. and. He's out riding there with a couple of his EF Education First teammates who of course ride Cannondale bikes and they appear to be on bikes with drop seat stays. So it Blimey. looks like they could well be on their way. Our friends over at Physique are launching a brand new pair of shoes any day now down to demand and the development carried out by the Movistar team. The power strap shoe is already in the Physique range but this new Vento power strap R1 shoe is going to be right up at the top. Now the big difference between the Vento Powerstrap R1 shoe and the standard Powerstrap definitely has to be the carbon fibre sole. So you're going to get an increased power transfer, more rigidity, as well as lighter weight there. So all those things, well they add up to quite a bit of weight saving and they're going to weigh just 232 grams a pair. For a is... size 42 and a half that is. Yeah, that's probably the average size, isn't it, of a Movistar rider? You would imagine so, they're not yeah. very big guys are they? No, brief flyweight riders. Uh, they do come in the Movistar colorway, which I'm a big fan of personally, I like that. Uh, and those two straps, they tighten across the instep and also the midfoot there too. And you've got quite a lot of adjustment, I find, with Velcro. I'm a big fan of them. You don't see Velcro shoes on top end uh, offerings anymore, do you? No, it's true. Whereas in the past, they were actually pretty much the only mechanism you would ever consider using. Yeah. Infinitely adjustable and lightweight. What's not to love? Yeah, keep your eyes peeled for those ones any day now. Right, more new shoes now, and I'm a huge fan of footwear. You are, John. Yeah, probably the biggest footwear fan in the office, do you reckon? Easily, you could wear a new pair every day of the week. Either way, right, Shimano are definitely committed to the gravel scene because they've just released some new shoes specifically aimed for gravel riders, and these are called the RX-8, which I always thought was a Mazda car. New copyright, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Anyway, these are aimed and targeted at the competitive gravel racer, which Ooh. is a, a new breed that's growing as well. Yep. They feature a full length carbon sole, a single boa dial with a little Velcro strap down at the front. Essentially, they are just a slimmed down version of a fully blown mountain bike shoe, which road riders often complain are a little bit heavier and a little bit bulkier than their road shoes. Yeah, and some people can, they struggle to adapt at first, yeah. don't you really, because of that. Personally, I always quite like putting on a pair of mountain bike shoes after a while, because they seem 
really, really comfortable. Yeah, they're more yeah. like slippers, aren't they, than yeah. uh, full-blown road shoes. And lastly, it's time, actually, just to give a bit of a shout-out to PT's, which is set up by Steve Pete, a bit of a mountain bike legend. We do let them come into the GCN tech show every now and then. Don't Not we? in person, John. Not in person. Oh, God, no. No, we'd never let that happen. But basically, released a new, really environmentally friendly-looking tubeless kit. So, actually, I spoke all about tubeless last week. You did, so yeah. all the packaging, the, all the instructions are on there. You've got no waste whatsoever. It's all on cardboard. And you get a little sticker. Even the sealant comes in a little reusable pouch too. So you can take that with you out on your trail if you get a blowout and everything's good to yeah, go. Yeah, what I like though is that the valve caps, normally yeah. these get taken off and thrown away, but these yeah. actually feature a little tool for removing the valve core. Yeah. You wouldn't throw that are, away, would you? You wouldn't throw that away. No. And it's made of aluminium for a start. Yeah. And they're also designed for life, so it's easy to clean them out. So yeah. the sealant doesn't get clammed in there. I think it's a genius little setup. Yeah. And I think, you know, more companies are starting to do this sort of thing. Reusable packaging. Yeah. I think it's brilliant, John. Yeah, I doff my cap to you. Right, bike of the week time now and oh, hang on, John. What? It's only back for one special occasion. Uh, this is a special occasion, my friend, because we've got two pretty cool bikes from the Giro d'Italia, which has just finished. Yes. First up in the Maglia Rosa corner is the bike of Richard Carapaz. Very nice. Yes, which is a Canyon Ultima, and well, it's decked out fully in pink, so it matches his leader's jersey. Overall winner as well. Pretty smart, that. Yeah, and it's up against the bike of Pascal Ackerman, so it's a specialised S-Works Venge. And while one side of it is painted, or rather it's got photographs, but really abstract ones printed onto the frame, black and white, very fancy, very arty. Yeah. And the other side, well, very colourful to match his points I jersey winner. Quite like that, but I think symmetry would bug me on a bike. I'd need to see the same thing from both sides. Yeah, I'm like that. I've too. never ridden one yeah. that was different. I've got a bike which is different on each side, but okay. no one's ever noticed till I told them. Just it was very subtle changes. Ah. I'll have to show you that. You have to bring it in, John. Along yeah. with everything else that you keep on promising to show us. Uh, all in good time. All in good time. Trust Jeez. me, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Anyway, to vote, just vote up there, top right hand corner. And next week, we will tell you who won. Right, it's now time for the part of the show called Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit before and after photos, videos, drawings. We have not any drawings yet, have we? No, or designs, you know. Yeah, anything like that, actually. Uh, of your upgrades to your bicycle or related equipment, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, if workshops. you. Yeah, yeah, workshops. I would love a workshop. And if you win, you get a great prize because you win one of these the Camelback Eddy, which is red, grey, and spillproof. Yeah, it's a water bottle. Right, okay, so first up then, we need to announce last week's winner. And it was between yeah. Daniel's Rally and Evan's Copy. And this was probably one of the closest fought out affairs ever on screw riding up Real battle, wasn't it? It was, yeah, because there was just 1% in it. Or rather, 2% in it. Anyway, the winner with 51% of the votes was Evan and that copy. Congratulations to that. It's a yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just amazed still that you managed to find a welder who would tackle that dropout and weld it all back together. Right, either way, get in touch with us on Facebook to arrange delivery of the Camelback Eddy water bottle. Right, Mr. OP. First up this week, we have David from right. Port Moody in British Columbia. Mm. Stop drinking, John. David had a set of Zip 202 wheels just lying around which no one was interested in buying, so David decided to build a bike for them. What a generous chap. Yeah, well, yeah lovely thing to do. Yeah. Being a lover of vintage still, but not a fan of how older components rode, David decided to do a Neo Retro build. Oh, I like his uh, like, Yeah, that's a good idea, that. Uh, David bought the frame from a friend who had moved to Germany and then pieced together a Durace 9000 group set, one of the best looking ones, best looking yeah. cranks from a friend, and also bits from Facebook Marketplace. One of my favourite places is a hangout, actually, Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The group set came with a, a Pioneer dual-sided power meter that didn't work anymore, although I bet you could get it working. Yep. But the cranks were the correct size. Oh. The rest of the parts were purchased online, and David finished the rest with some chrome bling, Thompson Elite stem and seat post, Richie Classic bars, astute saddle, Supercaz gold bar tape, and a super bling KMC gold chain. Oh, look at that rosin! Yeah. Nice. My Back of the word. Car there. Oh, David. Bits and pieces together. Look at those cranks, yeah. John. I, do you know what? That frame looks so... Oh, my... David. Naughty. That is absolutely beautiful. It's good, isn't it? Should we zoom in? Yeah. I was about to say, what wheels are they? But of course, they're the Zip 2 2 Remember the story, John? The bike was built for the wheels. Yeah, remember the basis of the whole story? That is an absolute beauty. I actually really like your bottle cages. Well, David, he's not up against Goliath, but 
He's up against Hamish from Napier in New Zealand. Hamish took a trip to the landfill earlier in the year and stumbled across a beautiful early 90s giant Kadex 980C Whoa. frame and fork sitting on the junk pile. No way. After a quick chat with the landfill attendant, the frame was in the back of Hamish's wagon and heading home with him. I bet it was like this. And he yeah. shot home and he thought before that landfill attendant actually realises what he's given away. Right, okay. Amish, when he got home, he stripped it of what was left of the old group set and other bits, and it wasn't looking too bad under the decades of grease and grime. Inspired by the cheap bike to superbike, Hamish decided the Kdex needed modernising. Fortunately, over the Christmas break, Hamish had upgraded his other bike, meaning he had a full 105 5700 group set and wheels available to go on the Kdex. The bike is finished with deader bars, stem and seat posts, and some Continental Grand Prix classic tyres complete the look. Now, Hamish, I've got to just say actually here, I love what you've done, but just go easy spreading out that 126 millimetre rear end to 130. Yeah, it could be dangerous on a bike of that age, that vintage. Either way, let's take a closer look. Yes. There it is. Imagine going to a, a landfill site and seeing that. Blimey. Well, you'd have to know what you were looking at because in that state, it does look awful, doesn't it? Steady on, Hamish watches. Sorry, oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. right, let's go down. Look at that bottom bracket. I, see, I don't remember them looking like that. That looks to me like it's had a bit of a fix somewhere along the lines. Hmm. But either way, it's remarkable. And then let's have a look. Finished item, oh, bang, that is bang, different. bang. That have that, good. David. Hamish is in town. You might have that rosin, but he's got an old Kdex. Yeah, the bottom bracket has had a bit of attention, hasn't it? Possibly. But Possibly. look at it, it does look yeah. amazing. It's great, isn't it? We've got a true battle. Yes, we have, John. Yeah. Who's it going to be, David or Hamish? Boat up there. Next week, we will reveal. It's going to be a closely fought out one, I reckon. It's got to be. What were those forks made of? Alloy. That's funny, alloy, isn't it? I reckon. Oh, maybe Come steel. Oh, right. Maybe steel, but alloy. Uh, alloy, it says alloy, doesn't it? Yeah, alloy then. Wow. Beauty. Right, it's now time for the Bike Vault, the part of the show where we rate your... Re-rate? It's now time for the Bike Vault, the part of the show where we... Why can't I speak today? <laughs> it's now time for the Bike Vault, the part of the show where your bikes get rated either nice or super nice. And what happens, Chris, when they get rated super nice? Ring the bell, Joe! So there we are. If you want to get into the bike vault, make sure you use the uploader tool found there in the description below and upload pictures of your bikes and also include information about you and your bike and where you come from. With no further ado, let's crack on. The first one in this week comes in from Andy from Walton on Thames in Surrey. It's Ooh, a Trek yeah. Madon uh, 9, isn't it that? Project uh, 1. Yeah, it's Project 1 one. Project 1 one. Uh, yeah, it's a nice bike, isn't it? I, I like yeah, the blue. I like the blue and I like the blue on the grey. Mm. That does work for me. Go on. It's got it's got rim brakes. Uh, for some reason, on an aero bike like that track, I just feel like they should have discs nowadays. Well, there we are. Sorry, I, I, I don't agree, but well, there we are. It sounds like it's a nice bike. We don't have to agree. You're, you're not. Yeah, we don't have to agree. Well, we have to agree for it to be a super nice. Ah, there we are. Nice bike, Andy. It is a nice bike. Next up, Razzy from London in Canada. That place does actually exist. Uh, it's a Cervelo, isn't it? Oh, it's a beauty that. See, I love a Cervelo. Yeah, is that the S the S and S three, isn't it? Yeah. Integra DI2. 54, I which is one of the best size frames to have because I can ride it. There we are. Or because it just looks good. This one, though, Chris, has got rim brakes. So, what's your thought on that? Well, it suits the Savage, John. Oh, right. Okay. There <laughs> we are. Okay. Uh, rotor crank, zip, wheels. Looks like a pair of Garmin Vector pedals as well. Exterior battery. Remember those? Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. That's the original uh, Ultegra DI2, I think. Right. Race. I don't know. Uh, I think it's all tech. Either way, I reckon personally that's it's an iconic bike as well, isn't it? It is an iconic bike, the S3. Yeah. Should we give it a ring? Shall we? Yeah. Give it a ring. <laughs> right, who's up next then? Oh, next up is Peter, home by the coast and sick. Yeah, great description of where you come from, yes. Peter. Yep, yeah, home by the coast. Any coast, anywhere. Yeah. What's he got? Chinelli Chine Mash. mash. The Chinelli Mash. They've got a bit of a cult following the Chinelli Mash, isn't it? Yeah, they have. DT Swiss wheels. We've got that looks to me like a tune uh, speed needle saddle as well. There. No, no, that looks to me like pain. 
Well, it you does say not look you, comfortable you, you that say jump. that you don't need padding on a saddle for it to be comfortable. No, that's that's true. I saw a rider at the Giro actually using one of those. No. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. On his Tantra bike. Yeah. So what we got? We got DT Swiss wheels on there. We got Dura Ace track chains. So you don't see those very often in the Octolink. No, I did have one in the bike vault a couple of weeks ago. One of those. You did. I, I remember did. that. Cibello Zip Stem. Thompson C post, yeah, classic Swiss wheels, content new 5000 wheels, tubeless, can't quite see. Egg beater pedals. Uh, yeah, should we give it a ring? Shall we? Okay. Three. Next up, uh, Gregor from Monte Baldo at Lake Garda. That's near where our colleague Alan lives, isn't it? Lake Garda. I believe it I is it indeed. Is yeah. This is a Simplon. That's got, I think, those fancy handlebars, a bit like the Cervelo. That's oh, fine. You know the new ones? Yeah. The one, like your old Townsend. Exactly. You know the score, trendsetter. Right. Okay, so it's shot. Has his saddle slipped? I don't know. I think so. Who is it from? Sorry. It is from Gregor ah, in yes. Monte Baldo. I mean, that is a stunning backdrop, isn't it? It is beautiful. But it makes you want to ride your bike. I'm not sure what the head unit is. It looks like a Sigma Rocks or something. No, you know what, actually? That head unit looks just like my emergency backup phone that I'm using at the moment. Emergency, he says. He's had that for months. It's still Years, an emergency. Actually. Yeah, still an emergency. I, personally, I think that's beautiful. I like that. I yeah. think that's absolutely beautiful because of the backdrop and everything. And the bike, you don't see Simplons. Much. You don't? What yeah. do you reckon? Yeah, Simplons. Go on, then. Oh, right. oh, John. Final one this week. Eddie on. from Brighton in the UK. We've had quite a few from the UK. Look at this. It's a Dean. Yeah. Oh, God, that brings back memories. It must be early 2000s, this. Trigon forks. Yeah. Some sort of rear elastomer shock, I'm guessing. No, like that's a, shock. no, it looks like an air shock or oil. I don't know. No, it's got a uh, air. It? Yeah, yeah, air shock. <laughs> so it's a titanium frame. It's been converted into a, into a one by gravel bike. By the looks of things, that's bizarre. It is bizarre because the forks it makes it look so funny. Because it's twenty six. Look at the wheels. Where's, where's the pivot coming from the for the rear shock? There is no pivot point. So is that just absorbing the the movement from the frame? Don't know. Don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't really want to get involved in it too much. But Cross it's beauty, wheels it? look stunning, don't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the gum side walls. I mean, is it a drop bar? Is it a flat? Bar? Well, it's a drop bar, isn't it? Obviously, but it's a, an amalgamation of all sorts, John. Yeah. It's like a Franken bike. Like part of me absolutely loves it. What should we do? And part of me has no idea what's going yeah, on. But <laughs> it's, it is a love hate. It's like Marmite, isn't it? I don't understand why you'd have a shock on the back but not on the front. No. I don't know, but what should we do? But then at the same time, you could stay seated if the road is rough and your hands will absorb. I just, oh, my mind's doing all sorts of things. I, th I think it's a super nice because I think so much it's effort a... has been put into it to make it what it is. It's one hell of a concept, isn't it? Oh, what the hell? Shall we? Give it a ring. <laughs> After all that. We want to keep looking at it almost. Well, yeah, but tell them, Chris, what do they have to do if they want to get in the bike? If vault? you do want to have your bike in the bike vault, use the down, the uploader tool rather down below in the description box. Yeah, join us again next week for more bike vault. Right, stay tuned to the channel. So remember to click that subscribe button and also the little bell notification so you get a little ding dong each and every time we put a video live. Yeah, and if you enjoyed this tech show, give us a big thumbs up too. Yeah, and for two more great videos, all right, clicking on Mr. Opie and clicking on Mr. Cat. See you next week.